This is a series review of Claymore. I'll speak generally about it at first if you're still trying to decide whether or not you want to watch it, and then I'll give you the warning when I get to the analysis part and where the spoilers are going to be. If you're looking for a standard action-based show that doesn't take a lot of effort, then this is a show to watch. Almost every character exchanges in some kind of action sequence or gets brutally killed. Blood and cliches everywhere! And I bring that up in a positive way, because sometimes that's all you need. I don't watch Predator for the rich characters or the inventive plot lines. And that's not the reason to watch Claymore, because the characters are stiff and unmemorable and they're basically just pieces of cardboard being moved from place to place. And the storyline is shockingly predictable, even when it goes off in an unexpected direction. I felt like there were a lot of really cool and inventive ideas that went into putting this show together, but the execution just fell flat. I loved the idea of having a main cast of badass female characters who would kick everyone's asses, but not enough care was put into differentiating them from one another or even from the scenery. If you're going to watch Claymore, then watch Claymore, but don't go into it with too high expectations for good characters because you'll just be disappointed. In the end, I guess it's just an average show with a mediocre payoff and a forgettable everything. And I mean that in the best possible way. Now I'm going to talk about the show and the finale in a much more specific way, so if you haven't seen the show yet, then stop watching here because there will be spoilers. The biggest problem with the finale is that it was setting up for a season two. There were definitely other problems in it as well, but that finale was clearly meant to be a season finale rather than a series finale. As a result, we arrived at this finale with so many questions unanswered and plot lines that would be unfulfilled. The second biggest problem was that the characters were just so unlikable that it was hard to get invested in their quest and whether or not they were going to succeed. And the third biggest problem was the utter dismissal of this revenge plot that was set up since the series started. There were too many problems with Rocky's righteous speech at the end. First of all, Priscilla is not human. She's a Yoma, and the way Claymore solved their problems with Yoma is by killing them. Second of all, traumatic experiences in your childhood are not an excuse to escape justice for your wrongdoings. Third of all, this will not stop the cycle of revenge, because as soon as Priscilla gets hungry or gets evil again, then she's going to kill more people and eat them. So everyone who dies at Priscilla's hands after this is Rocky's fault. Fourth of all, Rocky's the biggest hypocrite ever, because if you remember in that first episode where we met him, he was so hell-bent on revenge that he followed Claire around to make sure that she killed the Yoma that killed his family. But because Priscilla looks human, suddenly it's immoral to carry out revenge. Fifth of all, Islay is just going to regroup and get stronger, and now that he's killed off a whole bunch of some of the most powerful Claymore, it'll be easier for him to win and um, we have Rocky to thank for that. I would go on, but I won't, because I think we're all pretty much on the same page. Now, I know Claymore was also a manga, and that it ended pretty recently. I haven't read it, but I do wonder if it would address some of the inquiries I have about the show. First of all, I wanted to know more about this organization, because to me, the most interesting aspect of the show was the mysteries surrounding this group. We have basically no information about what this group is, or how it functions, or who funds it, or what their ultimate goal is. Miria kept alluding to the suspicious and naughty things they were doing behind the scenes, but we never got any elaboration on that. The series that was proposed at the end of this finale sounded more interesting than the show we had just watched, because I felt like the organization would fall under investigation. Considering how many Claymore were killed in that battle, the organization is pretty decimated, and they have to go out and train a lot of new people. If there's any hope to cripple them, I suppose it would be right now. But everyone just seems to stand around and complain about all the problems that the organization causes, and they really just do seem very transparently evil, and no one's doing anything about it. If they were more upfront with what was going on and didn't start killing off their soldiers for stupid reasons, then I think the other soldiers would be less fed up with the secrecy. Most of the Claymore joined 
so that they could avenge someone. And I think a lot of them would still join even if they knew about the whole awakened being thing. It's not like being a claymore is an otherwise really respected and rewarding job. So they're just making things more difficult and fostering distrust with all the secrecy. But I guess that would just be if I ran the organization. There are very few shows out there that can claim to have strong female characters as the main protagonist. And I think Claymore did originally set out to change that by making basically all of the main characters women and making them all perfectly capable of beating you up if they felt like it. However, the problem is finding the balance between badassery and personality. Somehow, strength in this show seems to be equated with coldness or distance. The Claymore are all so buried in their work that it limits their facial expressions to the occasional furrowed eyebrow. The extent of their personality seem to just be a variety of traits pulled out of a hat, because it would be too much work to give personalities to every one of these women. At the start of each arc, we're introduced to this horde of new Claymore who all look and act exactly like the horde we met in the previous arc. They just seemed like different versions of the same character. And so when they were killed, it was difficult to care. It's hard to give a show so many characters and make them all worth remembering, especially when you have such a short amount of time to pull it off. In the end, Claymore was a show that was kind of rough around the edges, and I feel like it was trying very hard to be epic, but it couldn't support the weight of its own characters. I was really disappointed because I really wanted this show to be good, and I was hoping for it to get better with every episode. I do think it would have been pretty easy to make it a lot better, but it is, I guess, too late for that. When the fights were on, it was fun to watch, but that's pretty much the only thing I'm going to take away from this show. And that's all I'll say about Claymore at this point. If you want to suggest a new show, don't do it here. Head over to the suggestions video from the other day and make your suggestion there. Make sure to follow the rules. Voting is going to start tomorrow, so um, you have the rest of the day to make your suggestions in the suggestions video. I'll see you next time for the next show. Bye! In the end, Claymore was a show that was kind of rough around the evid- <laughs>